$10. Testing, testing. You can hear the ad. <laughs> All right, I'd like to call this meeting of the Wayfinding and Branding Committee uh, to order. It is 4.04 p.m. We do have a full quorum present. Has everyone had a chance to review the agenda? Anyone have any changes? Okay, can I get a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? Christina, uh, all's in favor? Unanimous. Onto the previous minutes, uh, I've attached these. You guys have them in front of you. Does anyone have any changes? Always a stick. Always a stickler, Will. <laughs> Can I get a motion to adopt the minutes from October twenty fourth, twenty twenty two, as presented? Okay, Will. I'll give it to Will. All's in favor? All right. Okay, good. Unanimous. Uh, guys, turn it over to you. All right. Well, we will get right into this, and I hope I don't mess up my little WebEx thing here. Is that still, Sean, yes. you can see yes. it. 
Well, thank you all for coming back and and um, and, and, and meeting with us again. Sean and I are slightly bleary eyed. Is that the right word? We've uh, been working hard at this since we saw you all last. There's been a lot of work that we've done since we saw you, and there's a lot of work we've still got to do. And we'll go over that as we go through this. In fact, you'll see me talking about um, some of the some of the different uh, some of the different things that we have yet to do. I will I will share that with you. But so basically, let's see if, um, we're gonna we're gonna walk work walk you through the entire system, okay, piece by piece. Um, we're going to talk about what we heard. Obviously, we had a lot of great conversations. Some of the overall values that, that we thought rose to the top. All of that led to both messaging and graphics. And then we're going to go through the brand development. So we're going to go through the colors and typeface and we're going to talk you through those a little bit. Um, uh, some of the things, it won't really be technical, but we'll tell you why we chose the colors. We'll tell you why we chose the typefaces that we did. We'll go into the graphic as well. Um, and then we'll then we'll share with you some of the brand extension and other th pieces that we have created. That is, um, that's where there's, there's still a good bit to do. What our goal is on, on, on a day like today is for us to um, build as much of a system as we can so that we can share with you all how this brand could evolve over time. This absolutely is going to be new to you. It's going to be foreign to you all. This is a, you know, this is our interpretation of what we've heard over the last few days, and that's okay. Um, our goal here is to share it with you and, and, and get input and thoughts from you all so that we can move the ball further down the field whether that be revisions to the brand, whether that means significant changes to, uh, you know, the graphic and the messaging, whether that be, okay, these are some very specific things that we would like for you to do in terms of, of deliverables. So um, goal today is to share the platform as much of a system as possible and, um, you know, get your input. And I will ask, you know, we'll go through this and it's not a ton of slides that we're going to share with you, but just bear with us, particularly when you first start to see the new graphics and the messaging. Let's wait until we get towards the end before we really start to um, have a conversation because uh, you, you'll, you'll see kind of how it grows. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is the destination brand, the place brand, the marketing brand. We talked a lot over the last few days about how we look at a marketing brand to promote the place and a governmental identity that, that represents the official functions of the government. We have done both of those, but the first thing we're going to do is talk about the destination brand. Uh, the elements of that brand is that color palette, it's the typefaces, it's the message. We'll talk a little bit about the message and then the overall graphic composition. So colors, first, first of all, uh, I, I mentioned to you all before, and Sean, by the way, please chime in if I miss something. Um, I mentioned to you all before, we try to use colors that are already either being used in the community or that we see in the wild in the community. So we always start with the platform of the color palette that you already have. And um, you really see, particularly with the, the town seal, which is your main identity right now, um, your existing colors are gold and greens, and then that grayscale that you have there with the, with the buildings in there. We wanted to try our best to keep some of those colors in the system. You know, you can look at the Marvin Day logo, which is really your, your only other graphic you have. I mean, you certainly have things like flyers for, um, for uh, the trick or treat thing, but um, you know that's that's the other one, and that, that's got a lot of sort of fall type colors in it. Certainly, things that we see here in the community. So the next is where our suggested color palette. And by the way, this should project pretty good. Well, this roof is very bright. The colors aren't going to show perfectly. And not only that, if, if you all have any questions about specific colors, you're welcome to come over and look over my shoulder because it's going to be a bit more true to form here. Um, they're washed out and they're darker here, okay? But that being said, the palette that we 
selected for Marvin, um, a lot of what we sort of landed on is we wanted a palette that had more of that that stately look that, you know, we talked about, um, you know, having this refined palette, this refined graphic, having this regal identity that we're trying to project. And because of that, we, we built off of the existing color palette and tried to use some, you know, really respect those golds and blues, keep that yellow in there, but also importantly, add greens, add greens and browns to the color palette because really a lot of, first and foremost, the main value about what everybody loves about this community is the natural assets that you have here by far and away. Y'all have got a great community. Y'all have got a lot of assets, but that's the thing. That's the thing for you all. So we wanted to make sure that we we did that. Now, this color palette, because we were trying to do something very classy, very stately, we do have a little bit more of a darker color palette. We can bring out brighter colors in some of the extension, but these are the main colors that we have for the whole thing. The next slide shows our type. Did I miss anything, Sean? No. The next um, slide shows our typeface, and the th same thing there. And I am going to let Sean share with you all where what our what our focus was here. But again, with our goal of trying to create something that is very clean and crisp and classic and stately, um, to use that term again, uh, we wanted to pair up a, a, a couple of different fonts that that really kind of connoted that or also when we you'll see in the in the graphics that really kind of presents that exactly yeah so you know one of the challenges we have in a community such as the village of marvin is that you are a collection of, of like smaller communities with your subdivisions and so you know we did a, a good bit of research on our tours around looking at what a lot of the communities were doing and um, making sure that, you know, we're we're kind of staying in a comfortable safe space from a lot of what else is happening out there. There's a lot of scripts. There's a lot of lighter typefaces and things. And we wanted to uh, provide a little bit more weight to the village as far as the identity goes. You know, we wanted something that had uh, some boldness to it, but wasn't overly heavy um, visually uh, and so the primary typeface I chose has a lot of options and it. it goes from very light and italicized up to very bold so we have a lot of options to play with in there as we do different uh, design extensions uh, but it has a nice serif to it that has a, a subtle rounded edge it gives it a little bit to me it, it feels like it's been around for a while uh, it's a little, almost a weathered edge to it where it's just kind of softer and it's not a, a real harsh serif to it, but um, just want something with a little bit of personality. And then pairing that with that bold secondary typeface gives us a nice contrast. That typeface also has a variety of different weights and italicized versions. So as we move through the system, you can see how they can pair differently in different weights uh, to create different hierarchies of the information. And there's there's really, a, believe it or not, there's a lot of strategy in our selection of these fonts. And, um, you know, if we're trying to create something that has a very formal look to it, if you look, and, and Sean mentioned this, if you look around some of the neighborhoods that you have in this community, there's a lot of really ornate scripts. Um, and, and, you know, it does a really good job of projecting the identity of that place. The challenge with stuff like that is with the community, it's very difficult to read. So that's why he selected this font that has so many different variations to it. It has that thickness bold font. Um, it has that thinner font too that we can use in certain applications. Um, and, and again, as he mentioned, it's got some character to the overall serif font. So, so the next thing is values and messaging. Um, and these are the things, y'all were in many of these meetings and y'all shared this with us, but you also heard other people sharing these thoughts with us. But these are the things that we heard that went directly into the message and the graphic identity. So the first and foremost thing that I told y'all already is the natural environment. You know, you've got, I mean, you, it begins with these green roadways that you have when you drive into the community. You've got these natural buffers between um, the road and these, these great neighborhoods that you have behind. Um, you've got these legacy oaks through, all throughout the community, particularly in the Heritage District. 
um, which which really struck us as something that was you don't necessarily see quite as much in other suburban communities because they cut them down, right? And you all have protect, protected a lot of them and you've saved a lot of them. Obviously, Marvin Eford Park is, I mean, gosh, that's the anchor to this community. I mean, what an amazing destination that is. You all have done an incredible job with that. But it really, you know, the, just the, it really highlights the natural resources and the wildlife that you all have here in this community. Um, and then that extends to the trails network. Um, obviously, you've got the Marvin Loop, which is kind of front and center, and you, you see it as you uh, walk down towards the, uh, the the elementary school. But then you go in some of these trails that are a little bit more rustic back behind these these neighborhoods, and those are as good as, as any trails that we've seen. They are awesome. And it's so exciting to hear that you all have a vision and a plan to continue to grow those here in, in the village of Marvin. Because again, I think that's something that other communities don't necessarily have. I mean, we've got a great rail tip trail in our community that's amazing. Um, and, and it's awesome, but it's it's also, you know, it's um it's a it's 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 a uh, asphalt path that goes through and that's great and that's important. You know, you can roll it, you can do a stroller on it, you can ride your bike on it, but how awesome are these gravel trails that you have and you're, you're 25 feet from somebody's backyard, but you might as well be out in the middle of the wilderness. Um, that's pretty crazy. You're a certified wildlife community in the middle of a metro area. How, how cool is that? Um, and then someone mentioned, it might've been in the steering committee, I think it was, is what, where this, bubble of green in this urban metro and that's true and that's something that separates you from your nearby peers that might have some similar characteristics to you all in terms of demographics and maybe even history um, but you're this bubble of green that you've been able to preserve and protect here and and um, you know that goes with some of the other conversations about why people come here people come here because you know th there's a number of reasons why we come here um, certainly the neighborhoods are a big thing um, you know, the affluence of the community is something that is important, I think, for many people that do come here. But it's also the fact that we value that outdoor space here in this community, whether it be Marvin Eford Park, whether it be our trails, or whether it be our backyards that we have in our, at our house. Um, history. Uh, again, we talked in the steering committee about one of the main goals being, you know, we want to introduce Marvin to the people that live here or reintroduce Marvin to the people that live here. It was interesting for me to read a lot more about the history of this community because you really do have um, a, a deep history. You know, you may not necessarily have a downtown with with historic buildings and bricks and, you know, and, and, and shops and restaurants and all that sort of stuff, but you really do have a historic story here that is compelling. Um, and, you know, the folks that live here, many probably know about it and, and probably a lot don't know about that. So that's something that's important. Um, you know, what is obviously your, the Marvin Heritage District is the anchor to that. It's where some of the tangible things are like the buildings and, the, and, and, and um, you know, some of that early history, the churches, but also the story about the, the Ross family and the Ross sister and sisters is really a cool story. And, you know, it's interesting as you all were talking about the diversity of this place that you all have, that, that theme, that strand started over 100 years ago with um, the history here in this community. Um, then imagery, imagery, and you'll see a lot of this in the graphics that we're gonna sh share. Uh, obviously, the natural resources is one. The oak trees are very stately, they're very solid. Um, Village Hall, this building itself is a, probably the most iconic, um, other than the, the, the churches, um, building, uh, civic building in, in the community. Uh, there's the barn at the Marvin Eford Park and a really cool weather vane on that. That's one of the things that, that we picked up on, the horse weather vane that's at the top of that. That's pretty unique. And then next is the people. I mean, this, this community, very proud. Um, I shared with you this the other day that any of the other ring communities of Charlotte that we've worked in, people have located there because 
you know, well, the taxes are better over there. Or I was able to find a property there when I was, when I was looking around the area. What we heard loud and clear is the people that live here in Marvin chose to live here in Marvin. They weren't just looking to find a place outside of Charlotte where they could live. They came here because of the assets that Marvin affords. Um, so, and, and we talked about diversity again, and it, it was, I didn't know this until y'all shared with me the other day that this is a very diverse community here. Um, and of course, over the course of, of, of the interviews and as we were driving around and, and taking pictures, we saw that. And I know that one of, or a couple of you all actually in the original steering committee, as well as some of the other stakeholder meetings that we had said, you know, the, one of the goals about the, the, the goals of this process needs to be tools to where we can better engage the community, to where we can grow our volunteer base within the community. And I'm not discounting that because I realize that is a very important thing that we need to accomplish with this. But by the same token, I, you all are a, engaged community you have people that are plugged into um to the community we had you know a, a bunch of folks at the public meeting the other night i heard last night there was a lot of folks at the coffee with council uh, this community is a community that wants to be part of the civic conversation here um, and, and that's something that can be very unique in a suburban area Character design, and this goes back to, okay, wh where are we going with this? Um, one of the things that was mentioned is when we were talking to you about what makes us different. Well, it, and it was talked about, well, let's, let's, let's lean in on why people want to be here. Let's lean in a little bit on that affluence that we have here. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we, we present that because that's what we are proud about. That's also a lot of why we are here. But we also want to make sure that it's it, that we do it in a nuanced way to where it's understated. It's not pretentious. Um, and then that goes back to the overall design, which I've alluded to before, is we landed on something graphically that is very simple. It's very clean. It's very crisp. You know, it's, it's, it's very formal overall. Um, and, and that all came out of the values that you all shared with us. The other thing is, is quite often when we do a destination brand, and that's what we're talking about here, we don't use the town of in that or the city of in that name. Um, we will obviously in the organizational, the governmental logo, but we don't necessarily, necessarily do that you know, it wouldn't be the city of Concord. It would be Concord, for example. It wouldn't be the town of Zebulon. It would be Zebulon. But here, village is, A, something that sets you apart from your peers within the region and most of the places in the entire state of North Carolina. But also, it really also um, connects to that formal nature of your place here. So, so we did incorporate that into the main brand identity graphic, and we don't always do that. We do have variations without it, but that's something that's nuanced in, in the design. And then finally, we talked about this plenty is um, we heard loud and clear that our focus needs to be on that internal message. Communicating to the people that live here in the community, helping build community pride, helping connect all of our neighborhoods and all of our residents both inside the municipal boundaries of um, the village of Marvin, but also those that may be just directly adjacent to Marvin, Marvin and use our, our resources and maybe one day might be part of the Marvin community um, officially. So that internal message is our priority here. So, um, so it's not tourism and those sorts of things. It's, it's really that internal message. So that's the brand values. I probably spent a little bit more time on that than I needed to. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the brand statement. Um, and as I mentioned to you all before, the brand statement is that elevator speech about the place. It tries to connect all the positive attributes about the community, but also tries to lay the foundation and the layers of what our message is, but also what our, our graphic design would be. So I'm going to share that with you. It's only three slides long, but it's a lot, lots of words. So just bear with me. And also a lot of this was written in the middle of the night. So there's probably a typo or two in here. So we will fix those before uh, we finish this project. So we are Marvin, North Carolina. 
Chartered as a village in 1994, our rich history runs deep in Marvin. We are originally inhabited by woodland Indians who lived among the forest and thickets and abundant wildlife of the Union County wilderness. Early European settlers found our area and soon established a prosperous agrarian economy and simple lifestyle defined by cotton farming and building of community. Our foundation of faith and productivity is still seen in the historic churches and homesteads in the Marvin Heritage District, and our legacy of diversity handed down by Maggie Ross lives on to this day. Also handed down is a deeply rooted appreciation of land and nature. We are surrounded by suburbia and one of the largest metros in the South. You have sustained our natural riches and our plentiful landscape. It is the stately oaks in our neighborhoods, our pastoral trails providing passive strolls throughout our community, and even the verdant greenery preserved along our roadways and communities. Perhaps most of all, it's the bucolic scenery of Marvin Ethan Park with its lush gardens, flowers, and wildlife. <coughs> Marvin truly is a bubble of green and nature in the middle of a sea of urbanization. It is this nature and upscale quality of life that has drawn our residents to choose to live here. We are a proud community and the accolades we've received as the best town in North Carolina is on display in our elegant homes, exceptional schools, and diverse neighbors. We love to come together in Marvin at events and celebrations in the park, gatherings in our neighborhood, clubhouses, and community functions at the Village Hall. The Village of Marvin is proud but unpretentious, affluent yet understated. We are a retreat from the metro and have a wealth of amenities that define us as a place. We are active and green, content and comfortable. That is our nature, and our nature is flourishing. The village of Marvin, rich in nature. So that's the overall brand message and the graphics that led us to this primary destination brand identity and logo that we're talking about. Um, what our focus was, is to create something that was very bold and very clean. We wanted something that was simple and not overly ornate because we wanted it to be very formal looking. But we also wanted it to connect to the, the natural resources that we have here. So that's obviously why the green is in there and the oak tree is in there. That's very important. But that green and that gold and that blue color that you see here, the three primary colors, are um, really that, that formal, more regal and more um, sort of classic look of, of the logo. Now, rich in nature, that is something that, you know, this is a very simple statement and, and I think that's important here. We tried a number of different variations of this, but this is what we landed on because we felt like, number one, it was something that didn't overstate, you know, the affluence of the community and wealth of the community. But on the other hand, it's something that we can use to really layer that larger story about the place. Because you are absolutely rich in nature, but you're also rich in community. You're rich in people. There's all these different layers of you, you all that you have, rich in wildlife. These all these different things that you have here that really define your riches that aren't that don't have to do with dollars and cents and homes and, and those sorts of things. But still, it also allows us a platform to be proud of the place that we have. Do you have any other thoughts on that before I go? No, thank you. Um, I did just want to talk a little bit about some of the other inspiration here, you know, looking at what Marvin has been using to great effect with the seal and all, you know, we wanted to build off of that concept with this this round sort of seal like approach even with the logo um, that will still pair very well with the, the municipal identity um, but placing it in sort of this this semicircle above it but part of my thought process was a little bit it looks a little like the sun rising you know, just coming up over the horizon, but also to ground the oak tree to kind of give it roots. Because, you know, one of the things that we were talking about was the design of the current seal is, is very interesting in the approach and, and some of the justification that went into that. 
Uh, and as we drove around and we thought about why the churches were included, looking at other inspiration about what could be included, we realized in front of both of the churches are massive oak trees. And in many other places are these massive oak trees that have been around as long or longer than most, if not all of the buildings in the area. And so that was really just kind of kept jumping out at me as like inspiration of what represents a strong community. And you know, the fact that when you already look at the icons that are representing your community, there are these others standing sentinel in front of them. And so that was my inspiration there and to kind of give it that base to really make it feel grounded and rooted, like it's growing out of the village itself. And one of the things is, too, and this is a little bit of a nuance in our, our um, creative process, whenever we're trying to do something that's very formal, there's going to be a symmetry to it. Um, that's very important. A lot of times in communities, we'll have offset, offset logos and town names. You know, one of the challenges we had is Village of Marvin. I told you, we thought that Village was important to use in your, your main destination brand identity because that's a longer a longer word and longer statement, but it worked really well with the platform with the, the circle and the sunrising and the, and, and the tree and the oaks and the roots there. Um, the next series of variations are, are, are variations of this because, you know, you, you, you're not always going to use the tagline. Sometimes you're going to want to use a stack version and sometimes you're going to want to use a horizontal version uh, depending on applications. So these are some examples of that. Here's one that is, you know, that horizontal version that you see there. Here's one where not all, not all the time are you going to use the tagline. Quite often you're going to use North Carolina, or you may have another kind of subtext under that to represent a, a, a village department or um, an event or something like that. So a village of Marvin, North Carolina. It's not like there's a whole lot of Marvins around though, right? Um, it's not like Greenville. Um, Here's, a, here's a, another stack version that you see here, Village of Martin, North Carolina. It, it, there's probably going to be, even though I said that Mar or using the word village was very important, there probably will be applications where you don't necessarily want to use that word village. So this is not an either or thing. Whatever we land on, this is a draft, again, what we're talking about here. So whatever we ultimately land on, there's going to be a number of variations to it. It's not a, well, I like this one better than the, uh, the one before. All of these can be used. The one that we shared with you first would probably be the one that's used 90% of the time. But these, these other applications would be used whenever needed. Now, we also have to think about the whole color palette. Um, this is a very simple logo. It's got those three colors that we talked about. You saw the larger color palette that we shared with you before that will come out probably in a lot of the brand extension. But we also wanted to be able to do the, those in singer color and reverse logos. Um, and, and sort of the, the classiness and formal nature of this logo makes it work really well with those single colors that you see there. Um, and each, you know, each of those sort of those two color pair, pairings on the right work really well together as, as well. Next is now this is something we're playing with right here. This is this could be a variation of the logo. This is a very formalized look at the village of of Marvin. And you know, you, you think about classic brands, or I should say, high end brands. Um, like Gucci or um, Louis Vuitton and, you know, other types of, of brand identities. And a lot of times, oftentimes you have that um, monogram look to those. And uh, so we went, at, we went ahead and took a crack at looking at what that would look like. Sean, I don't know if you have anything else to share on this. No, that was definitely our inspiration. And I really tried hard on this to get a little O to work in here as well. So we have like the V-O-M uh, and I just haven't been able to necessarily crack that acorn yet. Um, but now, again, just taking that simple shape that we've established with the primary and figure out a nice clean way of presenting it as a monogram, as, as Aaron said, you know, whether this is for embroidery or a simple sticker that people put on their the windshield on, on their car. You know, we heard about some of the other neighborhoods that people will see the stickers whenever they're in Charlotte and they're like, oh, I know they're from Marvin because of their gate pass to get into you know, one of the communities or something, which is kind of interesting. So, and, and again, this is not an either or situation. This is just a different layer to the brand system. 
So that's the destination brand. Now we want to talk about the government identity, and we spent plenty of time talking about your existing um, logo and, or excuse me, your existing seal. And you all gave us some, some specific creative uh, guidance on what we should do to that. And, and so I want, I want to walk you through that. This is your existing um, town seal there. And, of course, the colors, we respected the colors of the main system, particularly the golds and the green. Um, you know, and you see the two churches there. There's a lot. You know, we talked about this. There's a lot going on with the horse and the golf and the two churches. and There's lots of words and, and content on this. So even though it's not a busy, it's not the busiest of, of town seals that we've ever seen, there's some busyness to it. So you all suggested first, let's look at this, this logo. And let's 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 maybe tighten it up. Let's get a wrench to it and tighten it up a little bit and make it a little bit more current. So that's what we did first. So basically, what we did here is we kept every single, for the most part, element in this. We took some of the elements out that that were crowding the logo. Um, the you know the 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 the, the um, charter date. Uh, some of the other icons in there, but created something that was very clean and simple. Um, you have the sun burst behind the uh, trees. Uh, you have the trees in the original logo are yellow. Obviously, your trees are very beautiful and colorful today, but most of the time they're green. Um, so that was something we felt, felt that was important. The fields on the look, the the uh, below the churches were. A little bit kind of watermelon looking -y, if if that's a word watermelony looking i should say um we want to again we're trying to redesign the exact same feet uh, seal so we did that so mm -hmm. that's what we came up with and it's what's one that's very clean and respects your existing town seal and i was just realizing as i look at this that i did forget to include the 1994 date on here even though we did we we wanted to remove the month and the union county um, but I forgot to put the, the date back in and find a good spot. But a clean version of your somewhat busy existing seal. So the next thing was, okay, in addition to that, looking at our expanded color palette, looking at who we are today, how can we create that formal identity for the town government? And so what we came up with here was this particular logo. It used the darker gold that we have in our, our main color palette. Um, but obviously it uses this building, which is your most iconic civic building that you have. And you're really perhaps your only iconic, truly civic building that you have here in the community. The great thing about it is it's a beautiful piece of architecture. So um, we felt like that that worked really good here. You do have the um, incorporation date here, 1994, there in the pediment of the building. But, um, you know, we, and, we, and we changed the grayscale. To, I mean, it's still grayscale, I guess, but it's white and black. So it reflects the actual look of this. It's not like an old um, black and white photograph here. And so there's more contrast to this logo than what you have to your existing town seal. So, um, again, those are those two variations. One, taking the original seal, tightening it up, and making it more current, and removing some of the clutter. And then thinking about, hey, who are we today? And what would that uh, uh, official government identity look like for a government seal? So the next is all of the different ways we would um, use this on other marketing tools and brand extension. And then the first thing is brand extension. So we have things like um, different departments within uh, the village. We have events in the community. This is one of the areas where there's absolutely a punch list that we still are working on. But we did do a handful of examples to show you how this brand identity could expand. First thing is Parks and Rec, Parks and Recreation, the Village Market and Parks and Recreation. Again, bringing that um, second tree into the logo, but also some activity with the, uh, with, with the, the family, the mother and daughter that are there in, in that particular logo. It's a little bit more green than the original logo. There's more green into it, and that's important for Parks and Rec. The next is Eford Park. That's your main anchor to the community, Marvin Eford Park. So really one of the things that intrigued us there, again, I looked earlier, is the barn 
and the cupola, I guess it's, I don't know if it's technically called a cupola, but obviously the weather made the barn as well. Um, it's something that's really cool and, and unique there. Um, and so that's one of the things that we wanted to highlight with a Marvin Eford Park specific logo. Now these could be created for other destinations like your, your the different named greenways that you have here and trails that you have here and your future parks resources that you would have in the community um, so this is just an example and then of course you can see how that can be applied to your existing signage that you have there um, and you know it, it 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 really is a bit more of a formal uh sign that you have there's a beautiful sign that you already have um but really highlights the park and you know, the fact that it is a certified wildlife habit. I can't I can't talk enough about how awesome of a destination that is. Um, I just wanted to spend the whole time we were here over there. Actually, we went back yesterday about 11 o'clock to take more pictures because the previous day was foggy, as I mentioned. So many people there. And it was, it was workers who were there in their uniforms who were walking the trail where they're sitting there eating you know, eating lunch, and it was, you know, a couple of um, ladies who probably had some time that, uh, it, it, during the morning, they were walking their dogs there. Uh, there was, there was a, a fair amount of people there at 11 o'clock on what was yesterday, Tuesday. It was, it, was, it was pretty nice to see. So the next thing I mentioned, you know, the greenways themselves, you are building a greenway network. Obviously, many of these greenways, some of these greenways have a... Um, a specific name like Marvin Loop, and I can't remember the others off the top of my head, but there's others. You know, we can absolutely create um, additional identities for those individuals, but they're all part of your Greenway network, and that's what you're growing here. Um, and you can see this is a sign that this, this actually exists over here um, as you go out from. Uh, the, the village hall and you hit the preserve neighborhood where that other that other trail starts you actually have an old um sign i think was at your original village hall down down the street um and we just sort of recreated that sign with the village market greenways and then you know the, the, the directional signage to village hall and the roads that they are there in the preserve which i was just going to point out also include the, the walking times you know as you know, if somebody's wanting to walk over to uh was it white dogwood lane uh knowing letting them know that it's about a 20 minute walk to get through there uh that way people if you put distances on pedestrian signs often it will turn people off of like they don't want to walk a mile or a quarter mile you know we follow that example a lot in down like pedestrian signage for like even sidewalks uh but i think trails are just as important because you know the, the walkway is a little bit different with gravel and all so giving people sort of an estimate of how long they can expect to be on the trail is just a, a good um you know, practice now one other thing about this is um you all know that the other part of this project is a comprehensive wayfinding system. Um, we wanted to make sure we spent the right amount of time designing that. So we didn't, we didn't try to just throw together an illustration of what that would look like here because we need time to sort that out. We want your input on that. We did, however, just do a few signs like this one and a couple of others that we're going to share with you to just show how that would grow. Um, the next one is those, um, you know, those blade uh, additions that you could have um, on some of your neighborhoods. And again, you heard me talk about we try to create logos that have an, a strong icon that can be used by themselves without any words. And people will see those in the community and they'll understand, hey, this we're part of the Marvin community here. This neighborhood is in Marvin. There's also banners. I think banners is a. I'm sorry, I was just going to point out one other thing. About this was in one of our input meetings with Christina. She had mentioned a concern about fabrication cost for these additional blade signs to be put on there. And I was looking at the hardware as we walked around, and those the 
road name blades are just bolted onto one side or, or another of those poles. And so by having some simple hardware fabricated, it could easily be attached using either the same bolt pattern that the other um, panel is using, or it could be adjusted and just. Did you check multiple neighborhoods? Because they're not all the same. Um, I saw I did I, I saw two different neighborhoods okay. that had them, but that was the depth of my research uh, that I was paying attention for this. But it kind of gave me some uh, some hope that it shouldn't be terribly difficult okay. to um, to attach to different poles. So next is bannering, and you know that's something I think that's very important here in the community. Whether you're trying to highlight a character district like the. Um, you know the the Marvin Heritage District, or also someone mentioned that one of the staff members mentioned that they lived in Tika K, and that in Tika K, uh, when you're there, at every entrance to their neighborhoods, they have a Tika K banner that announces that you are in again Tika K, which is really cool. Um, what's that? I need to remember that for sure. Um, that's that's good to know. That's 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 oh wow that's ooh, that's that's hard that's hardcore right there. So, so banners and you'll see a lot more of this, particularly as we continue to develop and grow this system. You'll see different banners um, that that will develop, but that's just a hint on what they could look like. Certainly things like collateral, there's a million different things I'll share with you on punch list later that we can apply the logo to. And, you know, it could be the the, the shirts that, um, you know, staff members wear or counselors wear um, or really residents wear as well. These are certainly golf shirts or a golf focused community. There can also be t-shirts, hats, and those sorts of things. And then there's your events. <coughs> Sorry, there's events. Um, you know, like trick or treat, we really didn't tinker a whole lot with this particular logo because it's kind of a cool, playful logo. But we added the uh, fonts and, and and sort of brought it into that overall system there. Um, you know, with the balance and with the circle and all of that. There's also the hit. Oh, excuse me. There's also others like a, an event you don't have yet, but Austin was talking about was something you all like to do is like a summer movie series and so we took a crack at it giving it a name and a logo some moonlight movies in the park coffee with council that's a pretty i mean i'm sure there's other communities that do that but we work with a lot of communities and i don't know that i've worked with a place that has an event like that and i think that's a testament to a you all as counselors want to connect to your community, but B, your residents have something to say and they want to talk to you as well. And uh, I know it's a, an, an informal thing, which is great. Um, but we thought it was, was you know, important for us to create a, a graphic for that. And you still see the little speech bubble that's in the coffee there. And so that really kind of fits the theme of, of that particular event. And this just shows how they all come together. And I showed you some slides of this in other places before, but you know, if that, that, that Village of Marvin place based identity is right there in the middle. You can see how all of these different logos are different and unique, but they're all part of the same overall brand system. There's applying things to your vehicle graphics. <coughs> Certainly you've got some, some village vehicles here in the community. Um, or in, 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 in town here at Village Hall. Unfortunately, we, since we've been here, last time we were here, there was some the sheriff's vehicles that were here and they had, and I see the Village of Martin on the back of those already. Um, I was hoping they'd be here while we were here and they probably were, but whenever we were out in the parking lot, we didn't have an opportunity to, to take a picture of that. But we can show how we can apply some of these brand graphics to those vehicles as well. And this goes back to the idea of A, the Tika K model of highlighting those neighborhoods that are part of the community. And B, you know, we know that there's in this community of Marvin, there's a desirability to be within the municipality of Marvin. And we want to be able to help communities show that pride, show that they are in the, the, the community, but also maybe even 
you know, encourage other neighborhoods that we may have in some of our um, donut holes around here that, hey, you know, you can have representation. You can have these services that you don't have right now. You can have this, um, you know, more effective, um, you know, timely public safety if you were in our, our town limits, and our village limits. So it's just a way for these different communities to show that they are part of Marvin. And those, those could be things that's hard to see on this. That's why we showed the slide before. But we showed some graphics here on Marvin Creek, how those, those two signs were applied to their gateway. Could do the same thing with the banners that we talked about before that, sorry, that um, TK does. So that's the last graphic slide. I'm going to share with you my punch list, and then we can have a discussion about anything that we've talked about already. We can answer your questions. So our punch list, I mentioned that we try for this meeting to show as much as we can that we can develop during the time that we're here. And that's what we've shared with. But we know that there's lots of other logos that we need to build. There's lots of other uh, marketing tools that, that we need to work on, whether it be the Heritage District. Um, whether it be Marsh, what an incredible organization that is. Your other events that you have, like Marvin Day, which I know has a graphic with Marv the Owl on it, you know, certainly we can respect that with a redesign of that and bring that in. Uh, but even ones that don't necessarily exist, like uh, Farmer's Market. I made this punch list, by the way, before Sean finished some of the logos. So Coffee with Council on Spring Moon, you, know, you just saw. Um, street sign topper you just saw. One of the things, too, we were thinking about, Sean alluded to it with the, the, the VM um, the VM logo that you saw there, the monogram, is really having this internal strategy for us to be able to connect in and communicate to the people that live here, and that's the hashtag VOM. We'll have some ideas for that. Um, one of the things that we talked about was, you know, this Heritage District is a really cool vision that you all have. And I know that there's some, some folks that don't quite understand it, um, and, and that's okay. Uh, but perhaps there's some tools that we can put together that can help communicate what that vision is. And just like you might have with a, a, a uh, development, true development that is, is under construction and you have that big sign that, that, that shows the layout the plan, you could do something over here at the, the um, Heritage District really communicates this is the carriage of what we're talking about here. We're not talking about food lines and publics and those sorts of things. We're talking about small scale, um, you know, types of uh, uses that really will help us preserve and sustain the community that we have here today and certainly not take away from it. Banners, we'll have more banners, um, town cover, <coughs> organizational things like business card and letterhead. One of the things that I thought was really cool is that professional access pass that you all have. We can create something pretty easy that kind of formalizes that and brings that into the brand system. And then merchandising, there's a million different things. You name it, we can do it. Things that, that kind of make sense for your community is golf ball, Maybe, you know, maybe rather than, you know, a lot of times we'll do like a, little, a little water bottle, but maybe it's more like a hydro flask here that we can bring in. Um, you know, visor versus a baseball cap. I think house flags are something that will be really important here in this community, so we can do a variety of those. And then finally, ads. And a lot of times the ads that we will create, which we didn't have enough time to do today, I talked about how we'd like to do really visual graphics with a tagline like rich in nature or rich in community and a graphic that show a picture that shows that we have that we just haven't had the time to put those together but often with those ads there'll be a, a bit of a strategy or campaign to it i think one of the things that is um has potential when we talk about the uh, outcome of this needs to be us introducing marvin to our residents, reintroducing Marvin to our community is have some sort of that sort of ad campaign. We don't want to be too playful with it because I don't know, I don't know if that's right here, but my name is Marvin, basically. 
and really that campaign would be focused towards the community and would start to highlight the different aspects of the community, whether it be your history, whether it be your events, whether it be some of your other amenities. So that's our punch list. There's a punch list is actually a little bit bigger than this, but um, that's what we have to share. This is what we've been able to create over the last 24 hours or so. No, it is draft. Absolutely. I know that, that you all are seeing this for the first time. Um, you know, we look forward to your comments and your thoughts and input so that we can revise this, expand this, enhance this to make it that, that connected and consistent brand system for the community. One thing I'll note really fast is Marsh is a chapter of the local, uh, is a local chapter of the National Wildlife, is it North Carolina? North Carolina Wildlife Federation, and Bob and Christina run that. It's not a village organization, but we do partner with them. So any mar anything about Marsh's logo, that's the But that's okay, and, th and that's a good point, because often in this, you know, you build brand equity when everybody's kind of on the same page. That's where, that's where a brand becomes a brand. And often in things like this, we will take a crack at creating partner agencies' identities to invite them to be part of it and if it and if it if it makes sense and it works go ahead and go for it if you don't and if you say well you know what that doesn't really work for us of course there's nothing for us to share for marsh right now because we haven't done it yet but an example is we did this and done last year two years ago and one of the sort of tan tangent identities that we created we're doing a, a, a brand for the, the the city of dunn town of dunn was the Chamber of Commerce. Chamber of Commerce, again, it was a it was a one-off. We said, hey, use it if you want to use it. That was the first thing that, that that community actually implemented there. So that's a good point. Um, we would hope that the Village of Marvin would want our partner agencies, if they could, to be connected to the system. And we, do, we have seen that logo. It's on the town seal, and we would want to I think what we would want to do is respect what y'all already have, but again, try to find ways that we could bring it into the system. We need to make sure we add the tree lighting to the punch list. Thank you. That's that's definitely on the list of events. Yeah, and the friendship tree probably too. Mm. Yeah. Come up with is that all right? Absolutely. <laughs> Um, we were looking around and found uh, a similar logo on the town of Wake, Wake Forest website. Just wondering if there's anything that could be an uh, issue with trademarking or anything. Like there that. won't be with that. I mean, you can't really trademark an oak tree. I'm very familiar. Yeah, I've, I've thought that. I'm very familiar but, with that logo. We actually created their downtown brand in um, Wake Forest, which is a uh, it's a couple of leaves in the town of Wake Forest and downtown Wake Forest, and it pairs with what what is really is their municipal identity is is that um, you know an oak tree is something that has been used before. You know, it's not like it's no one's ever done it. I would say it would be a problem if Wake Forest were in Union County or Mecklenburg County or in York County or Lancaster County. Um, but the fact that it's three hours away and it is different logo, I don't think y'all should be worried about that. And there's definitely zero trademark issues with that. Can we go back to the punch list one more time? Which one? The punch list. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. No so, problem. you know, you showed us, you know, the nice, I'm thinking merchandising. And I know we're trying to keep everything a little more formal, but can we do like a fun like like a fun village logo like a Ow. like a hip one not necessarily a picture but just like just a like a like you know like um yeah sort of i mean like more just like the village yeah like. no not like that like you know like um pinehurst like i was just there it has like pine and then like it had like some like I don't remember what I had, but just something that's not so like formal that it's not a golf shirt. It's not like a pullover, but it's, you know, 
I don't know. From a product standpoint, I think there's a gazillion things that we could do that's a lot more playful like that and, and more fun. Mm -hmm. But also, I'm hearing you too that it's also it, it's also a different logo that we might be thinking about. Those are those are are easy to do kind of as, as an extension of this. And um, so we'll, we'll take a look at that as just, well. You know, we'll do it. We're on it. Because I'm just I mean, you know, if we're going to I mean, hopefully we're going to have some little cute little stores that are in the Heritage District and people can go and buy and, you know, it's VOM or I don't know. Again, this is not my we get asked for Village of Margaret shirts all the time. I think three. Huh? Well, <laughs> I think Sean should put I've had people volunteering. put something in that shadow of tree that's a little uh, like a big <laughs> you know, <laughs> I did try to put an owl in the tree, but I haven't been able to something in there. I, like, I, I was working know. hard. <laughs> <laughs> it it was hard. I haven't been able to work it out yet, but I will say that I was working on one of these and Aaron looked at it and goes, um, I see Falcor from the never ending story and like poking his head out. So we had to reverse engineer that one. So it didn't look like a monster because that's what you saw the whole time. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we can play with some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I do think that more of the owl, I mean, we heard some folks say it's awesome. Some folks say, oh, they don't like it. And I think it's kind of cool. I think that and I think that, you know, there's absolutely those type. We love it when we work in a community that has like a, a little bit of a mascot, which obviously Marv Dow mm -hmm. is a mascot. And and that can that can really. That can side note, and I should I don't know if I should say this, but that weather vane is very explicit. That's all I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. What? Can you tell yeah. He has a picture, but I, I, it's not on here. We, 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 um, it's, it's, uh, yes. He'll, did you have a <laughs> As Derek, did you know this? No. We have thirty bird <laughs> <laughs> It'll pass around. Yes. Oh uh, yeah. Um, you can certainly imagine it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, have a, I have a question that the one logo that you had with the two stars, you said that you forgot to put the dates in. So the date where the stars are in 1994 or something, is that what you're thinking? That's probably how we would, that's probably how we could do it. Well, I, you know, I didn't do that because in one of our meetings, somebody had mentioned that they didn't like the date split. And that, so I put stars there. And so I was thinking about maybe doing it in the bottom or in the top somewhere and like nesting it somewhere that it's kind of not like a little inconspicuous because it, it doesn't need to be front and center for the design of it. But that's one of the you potentials. Could, you could do a little straight platform there, mm -hmm. right? Right above North Carolina that, you, that could be the resting place for that. The stars are kind of cool. Stars make it more formal looking mm -hmm. a, a seal. And of course, you can see with. With this one, which we we feel like is probably the seal that y'all deserve today in, in 2022, um, this particular building, there's an easy place to put that in 1994. Don't you? Yeah. yeah. Anything we got, we, we want your input. Yeah. Yes, we do. Thank you. We do. Thank you. Just put it. Just put a. Just put a generic one on that picture, because yes, we are planning on putting one on top of the horse. building. We're atomically correct horse. No. Um. I know we're not. That's why we're not putting a horse on the top, and we're not putting a. Hold on. Mm -hmm. 
Well, and I think it looks like the building was built in 1994. And the, and that's a that. That's a fair comment, and I think that we could play with the placement in 1994. Shauna really originally had it in the eve under Hold that. on, hold on. Guys, seriously, like this is like a real meeting, like one person at a time. It's recorded. People need to hear if they want to come back and listen, please. I'm sorry. Um, we, we, we've talked about the placement of that 1994 on this, and that might not be the perfect place for it. We, uh, we originally had it in the eve under the pediment there. And I asked Sean to put it up because it was too small there. North Carolina, typically on seals, typically on seals, you do have the state name. That doesn't mean we have to do it because your seal can be, it's your seal. Um, but typically you do see that. And I, I mentioned the other day too, one of the extra things that you have on your seal is currently is Union County. And I said, I've re I rarely see Union County on a town seal or a county on a town seal, except for there's at least two other towns in the Union County that actually have Union County on the seal. I've never seen that before. And it probably happened because whoever did it first, the next person who did a seal said, well, we gotta, we gotta make sure we put Union County on there. But definitely I've never seen the the uh, month of incorporation on a town seal. And, and things like that is just a little bit of clutter that can be cleaned up. And even, you know, we've seen seals that have the two letter state abbreviation on them as well. Um, but they usually have the state name on them, usually. Derek, if you don't do the North Carolina on the bottom, like what would you, like how would you? I mean, that could work for sure. That's the two churches. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's you're right about that. Things things typically should represent stuff. Um, a lot of times there's formal things that you can put in there, like a star here and there, just to provide balance. Mm -hmm. We did one for uh, Youngsville, North Carolina, a few years ago. Um, right up, right next to Wake Forest, by the way, literally directly adjacent to it, and they had a basketball on there that had a state championship year on that basketball from 1942 or something and that high school hasn't existed for decades or decades and one of the things we did when we tightened that seal up and we did a number of other things they had this they had this really fun younger population that was moving to the community they had this really pretty competitive kickball league there so we changed the basketball to a kickball I guarantee you that's the only seal for a town that has a kickball in it. So. So do you guys want to go through this kind of like slide by slide and let's talk about it? So Aaron, we started the, I guess the, the reworked original seal. Cause that's the foot, no, that's not the that, right. So that's the original and that's the reworked original. But this is, and this is where we started, right? Okay. For the, for the, okay. Yes, for the visuals, for the visuals. Well, we did have we did have the the the, the, the um the new. marketing identity before. Okay, so let's start there. Okay, let me go to That's the this is the first graphic we shared with you all. Okay, so let's start here. I think that nature needs to be capitalized. I do too. I agree Thank with that. you. It is. He just didn't update the slide. I don't know. You did update. I said I that. And he, you're you're correct. That has been done. Yep. Absolutely. We can that was that, that was bogging my OCD. <laughs> I'm like, oh god. That has been done. We can check that off the list. The word the words village of Marvin are actually dark blue. Yes. Yeah. To us, it just looks black. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a dark blue. If you look over my shoulder here, but um, it's a dark blue. It probably it is. is. Yeah, it's, it's, it it's, looks a good bit darker, but on, on his screen, but it's you can it's, tell it's blue on your screen. Yeah, it's um, and that went with the formalization of the logo that that dark blue really pairs well with that gold. Um, and it balances with the green, too. I mean, we tried golds that were a little bit too yellow really competed with the green. 
Um, and so uh, it still looks real dark. It, I can lighten that up. Yeah, yeah make it a little bit more, a little bit more subtle. Definitely well, don't. What you see on a screen is not what print. Well, Take between print and a TV and, and a website, no, and a T-shirt, yeah, it's always difficult. Uh, but I think it's yeah, I think it's fair to dial that blue back as long as we don't make it royal. I think if it's royal, it loses He's some done. of that yeah. kind of classic so, formal character. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, push the button. All right, so I'm I have mixed opinions. I was I was hoping for. Um, more of the V and the M by themselves and more in a more stately fashion. Um, but I will be open to the, the tree. I don't like the tree. Um, it looks like a, a coastal uh, lilac with Spanish moss hanging mm -hmm. on it personally. And then I look at the white and I see animals in the clouds. Um, what? What? Oh. Go to the color, the moth, like the single color. Yeah. And the other thing is, I, I don't, I could be totally off, but the blue and the dark blue and the gold reminds me of Cuthbertson, and that's not in Marvin. Of who? Cuthbertson. When you get into the 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 navy and the gold palettes, it's um, it reminds me of Cuthbertson, which is in Waxhaw. No, not necessarily on that. I, there was just some of the slides that had the, uh, like the Cuthbertson High School color palette. Like we, if we're doing, I think if we're doing the blue and the gold, then we have to make sure we bring the green in, so that it doesn't look like a neighboring town's high school oh. colors. Well, I, mean, I don't want us to be orange and purple or orange and blue, yeah. but we can do orange and purple. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things I will say about the colors, uh, too, was that, you know, things change whenever we're, we're on the ground trying to create as much as we can in a short time frame to show how the system can, like, expand. And whenever I got to this, like, single and two-color treatment of the logo, things really started happening in, in my brain as far as some of these pairings where the tree isn't white on the background, where we've got these two colors that are sort of intertwined between it. And so that's definitely something I want to experiment more with is finding that out. And the tree itself uh, is another area that uh, we didn't include it here, but that was one of the things that I I did this morning whenever the first thing on the way into town was we stopped and when we've been here on the tours before and we did photography the other day, I focused on the churches, uh, you know, make, taking some nice shots of the churches from some different angles. And then last night in going through the creative process that led up to here, this is about the fifth tree that I've tried. And so ultimately what I want like to do is actually take the photos that I took this morning on the way in of the actual oak trees here and use those as the 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 represent like the, render the resource and render those as the inspiration for what this icon will become. I'll, I'll give you a little help probably find pictures of white oaks. Those are going to be more the shape you're going to look for. White oaks. And your know, white oaks. They're going to be about live oaks are the ones that touch the ground yeah. that, that he's talking about. That That's, you know, you're not touching the ground yet. But their limbs will actually go down to the ground and start mm -hmm. kind of go back up again. But white oaks are more what we have around here. And I have a personal reason for liking that. The two that are in front of each church, the one that is in front of each church, are those white oaks? They most likely, but I'll go look. Yeah, those are usually the bigger ones. That yeah. they've got a nice round shape to That's them. That's what they look like, and there's one right across the street from there as well. Um, they're also environmentally extremely strategic. Um, they're like the best tree if you're just going to plant one for wildlife. So nice check mark there. Good to know. All right, so guess what? To, I like you go the back tree. To the first one that says "Rich in Nature." Like I kind of want to go in order. Yeah. Yeah. Derek, thanks for pointing out that it looks like there's animals in the tree. <laughs> it's like animal cookies. Yeah, it is like animal cookies. I, but I do like this. I like this, the half circle that I, I like that. And I like the rich in nature. I, I think the rich in nature can mean the obvious rich in nature, but it can be rich in nature, you know? I mean, if we are cute with yeah. ourselves. I like when you guys said rich in community. That was yeah, yeah. agreed. And we 
had a couple of variations that had rich as the secondary word. And every time we said that out loud, we could think of other ways that it could be positioned kind of a hoity toity way. But the rich in, rich in, rich in, um, wealth of nature, you know, those types of things really don't put the emphasis on affluence. It puts the emphasis on the assets that we have. And that's why we ended up with rich in. And you could add lots of other words there one day. History and art. absolutely, yeah. For either the marketing or the banners, that's that's totally the intent. There is have something that's expandable that we can change and modify as needs change. Yeah. It's pretty open. Okay. Yep. Okay. So you you got your OCD issues. I've got mine. Um, the font i like the font that you picked and and i live with a graphic designer so i know all this i'm sorry font. i know <laughs> and, and i just can't imagine how much time you spend on that kind of stuff but fonts are different depending on the letters that you put out there and to me because i don't know fonts that well village looks like a different font than marvin does it because does. of the letters that that are in those mm, i agree words i don't know what to do about that it's not as noticeable in some other uh versions but in that one particularly but i do like the font because it's got a little bit of a serif without being a harsh serif. i get all that we have a variation that's all yeah. caps that that um we have a variation that's all caps that may help with that but again you know one of the things that we've learned with this is fonts is one of the things that you can really dial in and it's like it's like focusing a lens when you're you know getting your eyes checked when you get that one that works, you're like, that's it. it mm -hmm. agreed, agreed. Just, I'm just some putting that letter. Too, that is way down the list of, mm -hmm. of issues. And now I do see the animals. Well, so what, is the, for fonts? what is the name of the font? Quincy. When see, I'm looking for fonts, everything becomes a shape. It's not letters, it's not words, it's just shapes. And so like some of your letter combinations are just difficult, like the R and the V and then and the I and the yes. L. Yeah, it, it gets a little weird. Yeah, yeah, you've definitely got some negative spaces that are mm -hmm. cooked into that with the R again, the R and the V. <laughs> and then the descender of the G there too. See, yeah. I think the of looks like super fancy. The of looks the of is italicized. Okay. So it is just it, it is it is fancier than it's italicized. Okay. It's fancier, yes. <laughs> but okay, it that, might, well, it did. It looked. It just. Yeah. It looks. It I, might not yeah, I wanted be. the weight balance between Village and Marvin to kind of. See, it's more obvious there. there. It, 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 it is. It is obvious, obvious there. there. Oh, and it's capitalized. It is capitalized. Yeah. That was right. Okay. I'll fix that one. I think that might be the only one. I might not have changed the other slide. See, I really like that. that might be the Again, that the animal is a tree. That's and this would be great for the website that because a banner style. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And see again, carrying that ground across. You know, putting those roots down and and putting the village of on those roots. Maybe even uh, a tile size in too. Yes. Yeah. As mentioned earlier i did update one of them he did update the slide i just didn't do both of them oh i think that's what he did oh, what will well the the tagline is already italicized oh, okay. yes to soften it up a little bit but oddly in this version and i'll bet it's exactly the same it's not as obvious my issue yeah. with the word village and marvin mm -hmm. I, I, so i like that but it just is it, those that and, pops out at me and i mean it's, it's the g that stands out on this G, that one descender. Chris, it's not, you like it better stacked? Yeah, it, it sort of solves the problem for some reason, and I have no idea why, but either well, one of those. I will tell you this also, there is a, a non-zero percent chance that they are different fonts in that. So I'm not going to say it's 100% that they're identical, um, because again, you know, running through all this, but you but I'm through. pretty sure that that you're picking up on just a visual now, issue. And I understand what the letters and stuff, and I will get over my. And the all caps make a difference too. The all cap version, which unfortunately I don't have in this slide, um, Village and Marvin are all caps. There's a lot more balance to it, and then of is in lowercase. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would be interesting to see. I, I it's not going to. We can show you that point. on Sean's computer after we break. Okay. It's,
But they'll fix it. The, they'll take the buffalo out of the tree there. Or the yeah, doll. I did see an elephant. Yeah, yeah, one yeah. One. yeah. and a snake. Render yeah. one of the the actual white oaks that you have here. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to look at it and say, "Oh, that's the tree that's in front of the Methodist <laughs> sure. Church." But it uh, it will at least be something that's a little bit more realistic. And of course, we can point to that and say, "Well, that's the tree that's in front of the Methodist Church." Oh yeah, yeah. Derek on the on the other one. Which one? Uh, the the more the banner. Or the banner. Like the oh, the side. Go to the block version, yeah. like the the rectangular yeah. version. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering if you could take the V and the M and almost line them up and kind of play off of that stack that that other stack logo where the, right now the the Marvin is centered under those and yeah, I know. moving it over the the dot on the i and the g start to conflict a little but, bit but and, the yeah. answer is yes we can try it and see if it works but and, and you may end up with the of in front of marvin and that's not gonna be good uh, no we wouldn't like that in the end yeah yeah we, you never know i mean easy. half the time Merge those two. i'm like sean can you show me this and see how it works He's like, I've tried that. And I'm like, I just want to see it. And he does it. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. That doesn't work. Or, or it'll be something we're like, well, that's perfect. That, that, that is it. You know, All right. exactly. makes me when he's right. Let's get it. Let's go to the next one. And that's just the same one. It just shows North Carolina and stuff. Why isn't it tagline. Good? See, I like that. And can I ask a question about the, because to his point, and I don't know all the school colors around here and the surrounding areas. And at some point you end up with, you can use black and white, right? Yeah. And shades of gray or something. Um, do we have to have the red in there or do we have the red in there when we need it for the website, something like that. And we know better than to use it because I'm just picking that one because it looks like the school down the road. What red? Oh, oh, so that I'm that just picking one oh. where he said, he said oh. certain color combinations look like the school down uh, the road. That, that was, that was this one. Right. Oh, yeah. The, yeah that, it does have that, that burgundy yeah. sort of. Yes. I don't love that anyway, but I'd see where you might need it. Yeah. But you just keep the green in your It cool. was, you know, it was just a color in researching some of pairing up these colors that, you know, we had sort of a lighter brown in there. And I felt like this rich red paired well. So I just dropped it in as a potential tool down the road if it's something that. It looks oh for me. Yeah. I thought it looks like Virginia Tech, but okay. And UNC. Well again, yeah, yeah, we can we can find schools all over That's that are difficult. Thing. Yeah. But if we use green then we solve the problem. Or we just use one if we use well, I guess our schools green and white. Nothing. Green and white. I know. That's green is like your biggest color. You know, it's interesting Never because ending. when we when we do, and I, we probably had this conversation with you all when we talked about colors. I know we had it in a couple of meetings, but um, in some communities, the local high school color is critically important for us to use in our, our logo. Um, in other communities, it's not nearly as much. What, I mean, I'm not saying this is the case here at all, by the way, but it's interesting that some of the places that are super fast growing where the schools change districts and you add new schools and all of that and you you know your your son or daughter ends up going to a different high school than you went to because just the dynamics of the community changed that that often waters down people's connections to their local schools which makes it less important one of the other things that's critically important and this might be your comment is um using a rival school color is and we made that mistake once we were working in um Hayside, Virginia, way up in the mountains, and we did this, and it was a very you know, a lot of outdoor recreation and all it's all nature. And so there's greens and blues in our logo. It was the main colors of river that ran right through their downtown. There's trees and, and mountains everywhere. That's their colors, green and blue. We went through the whole thing and they're like, Oh, we love this, this is great. And every every comment was positive. And at the very end, this guy in the back goes like this he's very apologetic he's like you know i'm so sorry to bring this up i love everything that you've shared there but those two colors that you're using are the green wave colors of the green wave the next high school over their big rival we're like okay we gotta change that yeah so i think that's important we can we can do some and which well we can look at all the high schools but which specific one were you talking about Cuthbertson. 
Cuthbertson. <laughs> and Weddington, because isn't Weddington blue? Green and white. Green and white. Oh. Well, green and white. Yep. And yeah, I keep trying to lose that one. And who knows, again, I'm just talking out loud here. You, know, you see these one color variations on the left. You've got, say, the blue one on the top and the gold one in the middle. You know, green is important here, but it, it again, I'm just talking out loud. Maybe it's a situation where <laughs> that green color isn't one of the colors of the primary logo, but it comes out in the expansion of things like Parks and Rec or Eford Park, where the green becomes more prevalent. I do know it's important to you all, and I, I, I wouldn't. Well, especially it's if it's a tree. I mean, right? <laughs> hey, those trees right now are That's yellow true. and orange and red. I was driving. They really today. are. I, was like, Man, I think today might be the peak. Yeah, I think you're right. They look gorgeous. Is it possible to have a seal that's not a, a full circle? Or is that? Is that it's dumb? possible. Yeah, we could. Oh, you mean yeah. you mean the little flat part, like uh, the just end? like all, like almost all the logos have the you know what you describe as thing. like the sun coming oh. up. Um, I was just wondering if we could, you know, that's totally feasible, especially with you know the consistent sort of the front that. porch, kind of having that base there. Yeah, you know, it was one of the liberties I did take with this was adding that sidewalk going straight out to where it looks like it's welcome you into the front door that you can just walk into the building, um, which I think is was a nice little well, sentiment. I, one of the things that when you first showed this, I, I like it way better than the uh, the other two. Um, yeah, yeah. And the more I look at the current one, no, I can't even look at it anymore. But <laughs> but uh, the building, and maybe this was purposeful. It looks like it's almost too big for the seal, right? It's like whoa, it's it's mm -hmm. right here. It's, I just and because I and because I I think I like that sky thing going mm -hmm. on. Maybe you don't do the rays and stuff, but a little more sky, a little more green, and a little less building. But maybe not for mm -hmm. this. I just it That's just a looks. Good comment. Really I mean, maybe shrinking the size of the building a little bit and adding for some space could work. There's one variation where we have the entire building with its with its uh, wings on it as well, but it gets too it gets too thin, yeah. and that but it could be somewhere in between. Yeah. Yeah. Two two questions: Did you got did you guys look at doing more of a three dimensional perspective on the building? And I did. Because it looks like straight. Yeah, on. I did take a you know following a little bit of the inspiration of the original. We have we do have a couple of photos. That I did sort of render into position. Um, and that you can see it. Let's yeah. Say, right? Yeah. From the road. And um, so that's not uh, that's not a bad idea at all. I didn't go too far down that path mm -hmm. uh, just because that would have been more time consuming than doing this version of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. But it's definitely worth exploring. I think it makes it more lively. We've, yeah. we've done that on other seals mm -hmm. before too. Um, one of the things that we did talk about with this one, we had pictures from out front looking up and it kind of cut off the top of the building. Mm -hmm. So this was rendered based off of the actual plan design, the facade design that y'all have on the, the websites so or all the proportions are, are correct. Um, but yeah, we could look at like a three quarters look. Um, as well, we've got pictures that we can play with that mm -hmm. and definitely throw some sort of generic. Weather vane on the top because we are going to have. So I'm glad to hear that. Sean and I were walking out. It was either yesterday or dad's like, man, they really need a weather vane. Well, it was whenever we were talking about the weather vane. Yeah. We get park. that question a lot. Are you guys going to put a weather vane up there? Well, uh, one of the other interesting things about the weather vane at the park that it's, I took a little artistic liberty, but it, um, on the, um, well, it's only single color, so you can't tell depth or anything like that. But I um, changed the directions around so it says we underneath it <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> yes absolutely and not only that this is a three-quarters look at that um mm -hmm. that the top of the barn too yeah and it could definitely we could do something with this both with the style behind 
the building, mm -hmm. which has the trees, the, fl the flatter looking trees and then the sunburst and apply that to this with more of a three quarters look as well. Those two would, those two actually would look a lot more similar. Another thing I was going to say about this, about this seal, I think, is it just me as the yellow brown, just a little dull. It looks darker to me, yeah. but this is exactly what you and I were talking about, but the color gold, right? Yeah. Here we go. Now, <laughs> now there's a lot of contrast with the white and the gold, but if we do shrink this a little bit and add more blue and green to it, that might not be as much of an issue. Okay. Maybe, who knows? We'll, we can just try it out and see. Do you think if you take all the tree away from behind it, especially if you make the building smaller, then it's going to look like it's sitting in a field somewhere, and it definitely is not sitting yeah. in a field. And that is an actual totally tree line something. from the park. No fields. <laughs> no fields, no fields. That tree line. Yeah, that tree line. I, I took a picture of the tree line in there, and I ran it through Illustrator, and it traced out the top, and I smoothed it out a bit. But that, I thought that was kind of interesting because it is, you can see a couple different types of trees in there that, that so it's nice to be authentic to the tree line. we could have the, the fall version right there yeah, all different <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say this i don't know if anybody else has said it while i was in the restroom or not but i think you guys have done a great job Thank you. I, I agree I, I agree so i think first and foremost i really think that Thank you. i mean I'm I, for sorry <laughs> no i mean that should that i know that should have been said like up front I love, I personally love, and I'm one person, the overall feel of this. Yes, I think there's some tweaks that can be done, and you guys put this together in a really short amount of time. But I think overall, I mean, I love all this stuff. Like, that that makes me so happy to look at that kind of stuff. Moonlight it's, movies is so cute. Yeah, it's so right cute, then. but it's like, <laughs> with the little it's so the little cohesive. I think, yes, there's some tweaks that can, that can obviously happen, but... I think you guys have, I mean, I, I, I'm very. I agree 100%. I think they could tell from our questions, which were, okay, that letter, yes. you're close to that letter. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever we're getting to like colors and a little nuance here, we know we've gotten over the big hurdle, but thank you. And I hope that this slide here in particular, I always appreciate when Aaron puts these together, really shows how easy it can be once we hand this package over to you and give you these tools if you have a new event or something comes online that, that you can find some nice art on you know use these fonts use these colors and just you know tweak them a little bit to accomplish what you're doing you know just like what you've done with trick or treat in the park you know you found some cool artwork online all i did was the picture that Aaron had taken of those signs, I took it out of there, and it already had the half moon behind. I was like, oh, but they read my mind before I even got here and, you know, just updated that. So, you know, hopefully you see how easy it will be moving forward to take these tools and, and be able to evolve and grow the system as needs change. And the style guide, which is essentially the report that we'll develop once we finish this project, will help y'all. You know, when when you have that next event that you haven't even envisioned right now, it gives you guidance on how to do that. Can I can I ask something uh, about the monogram? Mm -hmm. If you could put that up. Okay. You say the you said you had you had some issues with trying to get the O. Now go to the street sign, flowering peach. Street sign. Mm -hmm. That one. No, nope. oh, that one went, went too fast. There's your O right there. Without the oak tree in the bottom, or having a uh, the bottom go across and then put um, instead of having the semicircle full the M on top of it with the separation. No, I was talking about like right now it's the V and M. You want to put the O in? Just trying to put a little. O I was in thinking the... make the you know make the actual make the whole circle down yeah. part of the well, i could put a o in the middle of that somehow i've tried, I've like, tried. I like just, z we did z yeah, yeah i can't get it to work yeah it could be a like a white <laughs> <laughs> little ornament uh -huh. i've tried a bunch of different places and i just i haven't gotten it to work just yet I'm, i haven't given up um i just haven't gotten it to work how do you envision us using that so this could be something that's monogrammed. This could be, like I said, a car sticker that's put, you know, just a little swag. That like OB for Outer Banks or something yeah. you see on people's it cars. It's like a letter seal, like, like you'd see on like a really fancy letter. Yeah. Like a thing that's yeah. Stamped, yeah. Yeah. Stamping the wax. 
Yeah, cap, baseball cap, something like that, where you want something simplified and you just want the initials, you know, that monogram in there. But, you know, looking at that, you have a lot of communities, not just in Marvin, but all around that, you know, you've, they've got big, big monograms in their and on their gates or on their entry signs and all. And so that was one of the things that I wanted. I was trying to figure out if we could pull off without looking to re redundant with other folks. And that was one of the reasons why I kind of leaned this direction with the typeface choices. Um, and so by being able to place it into that semicircle really helps put that, that stamp of the brand on it. So it's not just the letters, but putting it in that lockup connects it directly back to the brand itself. And hopefully that will become a bit iconic that when people see that, they'll know, oh, that's the village of Marvin. And this is just thinking out loud, truly. It, could you put like the shadow of the tree behind it? Is that too busy? I just don't want to lose the tree. Cause to me, that doesn't mean anything. Might, we might be able to do that. Yeah, that, I guess. Like I, the, I've just never been a monogram person, so I, I don't. Get that's that. like the fancy B in Valentine, right? Yeah, like which that's I like can't stand, but that's again me. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not trying to rush this like creative discussion along because we can come back to it. But what's like our next? Like, what's the next step? Like our meeting in the middle of. November is that the lighter next? blue and I know yeah I think blue. our next step I think y'all have given us a lot of really good comments for things that we can continue to explore um you know looking at these different variations and adding things and working with the, the tree and everything we've talked about colors the whole nine yards and then we we worked through that a little bit with what we have right now probably we wait to do the build out of, of our punch list until we're we're dialed in more on that graphic that, that we all can agree on or that we can mostly agree on. So maybe that between now and that next meeting, what we can do is we can start to explore some of these ideas and present those back to you all then and have another conversation. So that meeting's the ninth, correct? It's November 9th, yes. You can call me, Kim. You can call in. Okay. So then so then you guys can dial back in on the ninth kind of figure out like what you've got and then present this to council on the 14th. Is that that's probably too short of a turnaround for you guys in like five days. I mean, I'm hoping that there were just not going to be many changes after the night or like a yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that uh, and I'm sitting here, I'm not looking at you. Sean, Sean's calendar is the most important thing. Quite frankly, I, I can sit here and talk all the time, but it, it the stuff starts right here in this computer. Um, so, you know, I think that if it, let's just say this, if it's, um, if it's like you say, it's just like, yes, 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 we're, we're good to go. I think that'll make it easy for us to build out the system before then. If we do come back and we're not quite there yet, it might be something that we, you know. And, we, and that's fine. I mean, we can wait until, I mean, if, if I, I was merely asking just again, so I can kind of What's the process? I would hope forward? like that we could do it sooner than later. Okay, that but if if not, then us. it would be at the December our December council meeting that we could say, because really what I what I want what I want to do is let council look at it and be like, yeah, we really like it, we're good, because I don't want you guys to do all of this stuff, and council's like, well, we don't like that at all. And I think that we could right, and I think that we could even do an interim pre. You do. do you, you have that on your schedule, right? I've got the 9th at 10 a.m. and then the 14th at 3 p.m. I do have a meeting. Um, that's no, that's a different. No, sorry, that's um, for She's Maryland. The, 16th. the 9th and then the 16th is I've got a new Cumberland workshop. I don't have anything here on the 16th. And that and that's and that's okay. If I mean, can we can we get this? and just show it to council tomorrow because we have a work session tomorrow and just be like, we like it or like, we're totally, I like it. I mean, I think this steering committee likes it, like the concept. I have a comment about doing that. Don't let them do that. Sorry, I've been on their, their side of the table. 
they present it differently than we present it. Okay. And you will start a world of questions mm -hmm. and that I can't be, answer. There okay. will be pigs flying from yeah. the sky before it's all over. And, uh, 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 like, and we just, we had that bite us just today in another yep. community I got word of. And so. Been there. <laughs> I want to say that the introduction was awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Loved it. Yeah. So when can you guys, again, I don't want to get too far down this road and council is like, we hate this. Mm -hmm. Like, we absolutely don't like this. Because, again, I'm one person. I'm like not letting to... Joe talk right now because he doesn't get a vote, so it doesn't matter. Um... <laughs> what I'd like to do is, you know, take some of the feedback that we've received here and then let you all live with this, you know, for a couple days, a week or so, and give us whatever feedback you have as far as revisions to what you've seen. And then I can feed those through the system so that whenever we do put it in front of council, we have even more support from you as far as like, you know, we've seen it. We we like what we started with and they made these changes based on our feedback and we like okay. it even more. All right. And so, you know, then I feel like everybody will be in more support of it to council. OK, so we're thinking the 13th of December then. OK, December regular meeting is fine. Um, or we could do a special meeting. We'll, we'll figure it. We can we can definitely figure that out. So send me. Not, okay. Ruminate on all this. Send me your feedback. I can. I'll gather all up. Send it to them in one nice tidy package. That way you guys don't get Thank fifty you. emails. And what was the time on the thirteenth for that meeting? That if it's at the council meeting, it'll be six p.m. Six p.m. Um, one thing that uh, I just asked Eric, the Eford Park logo. It's the title. The name of the park is Marvin Eford Park. park. I updated yeah. that one too. I, I did change that again. You were. I, think I, I did want to put a word in for um, Bob who left. The only comment he had, he liked the tree and stuff. At least that's what I think he said. But that in the statement, he doesn't like the word bucolic. He's not sure that. So idyllic. Would we we already fixed that for you? Idyllic. Uh, yeah. Bob Bignola, I didn't know this. Yeah. Bucolic, bucolic means idyllic. Good enough, really? but it also sounds like bubonic play. Yeah, it almost sounds like me coughing over here, right? <laughs> yeah, a little. Yeah, yeah. Will you have to the We absolutely can. We, we don't have it done yet, but we will have it done. Yeah. I don't think that Marv is sacred, is he? No, yeah, I mean, it's a ligature okay. in that font where the F you and the can I take, you mean, can forces, take some creative so liberties. It's just a, yes. a tight trick. Tell them though. With different oh. type fonts. Okay. I can separate them if it looks too weird. We want to make sure you realize that Marv is only the owl has only been used one year and he's not sacred or anything. We we like the owl thing, huh. but so you can use you you have some, some creative license. liberties there. I like the little owl, but okay. Oh, she wants he is. I like him. You can hide owls everywhere. I, we can get some bronze ones and put them all around like mice on Maine. Mm -hmm. And that's what I noticed whenever I opened up those files that Marv has like some different color ways. So, you know, throughout the year, he kind of changes. Yeah, so we hadn't worked with him yet, but we can, we will. But the, the, uh, the only intentional part of that is that he's native. I mean, not a red owl, but owls are native, as we learned last night. And, yeah, and, and we got the official word of the owls that you all have here, I forget, but uh, Austin sent me. Screech, yeah. but that, that, what was that? Yep. The original, the original owl we used for Marvin Day was mostly yellow, but I like the fall color palette. And yeah. I've always liked that red. You know, the reason I pulled this one out of that was because all the yellows were already used in the yeah. existing seal, so I wanted to bring the other one out to show some other colors. That I, were I like fall alternatives to our to our nature themed logos. I don't know. And that's one of the other good things about this palette is it can be fairly seasonal. One thing I had a uh, suggestion on um, the seal, the new seal that y'all came up with, the one with like the old one, mm -hmm. the lines look like roads. I think they need to be really, really I think they're trying to, to make it not look like a watermelon. Yeah, this, one, this one looked a little bit I, more I didn't know until they, they pointed it out. And so we, we did something like that was less watermelon. Water but I that, think it was intended uh, to be a field. Hey, yeah, because a big, like just a green blob was just too much. Green. Maybe even a different color for that or whatever, but I think they're too wide. Well, I, I'm hoping that this is like we're going to move away altogether, but we'll see. 
I'm looking forward to seeing this one mm -hmm. to where we maybe we reduce the size of the building a little bit. We have the ability to put that that um yeah that's those pretty. rays behind, mm -hmm. and that will connect to the larger system, particularly with. More of an different part. There's something yeah. very happy about that. Yeah. Those rays. I mean, it's like, I don't know. I just like that. Yeah. 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 There's, no, there's no clouds. All right. I'm going to say thank you guys very much. I have to leave, but you guys can keep talking. I have to go get my thank child. You. So we thank you guys very much. This has been a great week. This has been a great constructive meeting for us. He didn't listen while you were here, so we'll see if he listens when you're gone. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, there's three things that are the, the most difficult to render, like, easily, like, not easily, but cleanly. It's people, water, and trees. Water's the worst. Yeah, like trying to convey those simply with an icon is, is just one every each one of those has been done a billion times. So trying to find a unique way, um, but two, they're just trees can be either too ornate or too cartoony and clip arty. But yeah, what I think looks good too is the, the parks and rec with the you know parent and child. Mm -hmm. That's good. I like. I really do like that. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, that too. come up with what oh I, if it is i did not see that so yeah. no that or maybe subconscious yeah really awesome <laughs> then yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> awesome great no idea how you were going to make that work I, yeah. yeah so, we, good job. I, we, <laughs> awesome. Tech uh, lines give us the most stress. Thing. And and it was so was aggravating. Who was two things and what's out in between them? Redefined. That's wedding. Ten. Wedding ten. And so after we heard that, it's like, oh, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. I, I just think it's such a. It, it's such an adaptive tagline. So we just we if we could put any word in there for nature and it mm -hmm. you know, so rich yeah. Rich in community, rich in spirit, rich yep. in Yep. Yeah. Or you can even flip it around and say what's in nature, like family in nature, you know, entertainment and like when movies at the park, you can do like movies in nature. So you can flip it on either way as well. Yeah. I like how the parks and rec logo kind of has the family tie. I felt like the uh, the big long three page statement you read at the beginning missed that like it it was it was wildly encompassing of everything except family well like you go to our school events and i mean they're just humongous and everybody knows everybody and uh, it just feels like a giant even though we're a, a big like you know suburb of charlotte like everybody knows everybody mm -hmm. you know and so it, we feel like a giant family. So I really, I, that came up yesterday or the day before about the school events and we, we can definitely nuance that, that to kind of come in that, that, space. but it, you know, it kind of, it reminds me again that you all are this bubble in this, this yeah. part of, I mean, probably all of, of the Charlotte area too. So we can stand out. It does. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a that, that'll be the logo for Marvin Streets. Uh, that's funny. Like I can stand out of that roundabout and work for an hour, and I can see a dozen people I know yeah. drive by. You know, like that's that's the community we live in.
That's um, great. Yeah, I see Joe text him while he's driving. Down <laughs> hey, at least you don't have to worry about oncoming traffic. So, you must go the wrong uh, way. I do. I would. I would love to tie into the. The we're a family, you know, a community built around tight knit families, real involved in our schools that somehow tie into that, but not let it dominate or anything. Just another part of it. It's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Another part to to bring in. And maybe it's maybe it's the Parks and Rec logo and that's it. But um, I. That just sums it up though, the parks and rec with the family and the trees and the sunshine. I like that um, the tree that you were adding to the street sign. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Except, I thought, well, that's how you figure out if you're a mark or not. Is that yeah. there? The tree. How simple was that? I didn't yeah. think about that. You just add right. that and you're like, wait, that's, we got not right there, so. No, no. Well, some. <laughs> You might, we might get it one day if, yeah. if you. One thing I was going to say, if you'll pay. Iconic than this. I one. like it. One thing I was going to say about this, I like the trees, but this is all, this would also be a good spot for that V and M. I like the V and M there too. I like the tree way better than the V and M. The thing I would, of course you do. I mean, I would, it would be an interesting yeah. sort of study is like the neighborhoods and which of these goes better in the neighborhood because if the neighborhood has a monogram or if, like we didn't do an exhaustive research of all the neighborhoods, but you know, are any of them using a tree? Um, and some of them definitely use monograms, so yeah. that might be that might be competing, which might be why an icon, yeah, like yeah, tree may may yeah. be more. Mm -hmm. To me, to me, that's more iconic than the seal is currently because it's so busy, and the VM I. And I don't, my, my opinion, you couldn't use it with VM. Yeah, they, put, yeah. they could, but uh, That's me. we don't, we can't decide this here, but I would say you get one shot at it. You get to pick the tree right. or no tree, right. because if you got, some of them have VM, some of them have a tree. Yeah. Now I don't even know where I am in the hundred percent. I mean, that's branding one over one right now. The most important thing is consistency. Yes. Can you do both or is, is that's what we that's, decided it was too busy? That's what he, oh, oh, the, with the tree behind the, the yeah, they're the, going to probably look with the tree. Yeah. I, like I, if we tone the tree down, does it? I have my suspicions about that, but I will give it a try. You can look at it. <laughs> but when, when we implement this, I think we have to be clear that you can either have the tree or don't have it or whatever it ends up being. You can have it or don't have it. Well, and the it's other, the, same the other thing that I didn't render here, and I think was in our punch list to do is a topper. And so potentially looking at a panel that could go over flowery peach, flowering peach and have villages of Marvin in a topper, the, like another panel that would be added on to peach street sign though. And then cha-ching, cha-ching, that's cheaper. Or, or just the main street that goes through the neighborhood. You don't have to do all the side streets potentially because you've already entered the neighborhood and you're on the That's side. busier and, and that little circle tree that just, I don't know. I like it. <laughs> They had me trained. Or <laughs> change the response. And then the new town. Well, and speaking of your gateway, your gateways into the community, that's going to be a, something that we're going to study in greater detail whenever we get into the wayfinding component of this project. And we'll be looking at doing pole mounted signs or monumental signs potentially, and the wayfinding signs that will be out uh, along the roads, guiding people to, to the park, to the schools, to your other assets and such, so to the village hall. Um, so that will all be something that will be studied and sort of established through that process as well. I have explained that, Alex. Yeah, you're my neighbor, but you're in Mormon and I'm not. But we remember the mic's on if you're talking. Just wondering. No, we're just talking. Okay, just making sure. Oh, he's not supposed to be talking anyway, so he's not. Okay. <laughs> So just just a reminder. Uh, after this, I'll get this from them. I'll send it to you guys. Ruminate on it. Kind of write up a write up a list of your uh, 
your what you would prefer to see your thoughts send it to me and i'll send it to them and we awesome and we don't don't share with the public in any way do we tell anybody or other than it's broadcast public, it's public knowledge we know any, any changes they make will be discussed at the yeah next I'd, meeting. I'd, I'd like to be able i mean again this has been such a great constructive discussion i'd love to be able to dial it in a little bit more before it's unveiled so to speak mm -hmm. Well, th this, is, this is it okay if this was included? In, this is an attachment in our minutes. Eventually, is it just labeled as draft, not final? I mean, yeah. It, You're going to get a more final version in a matter of days. Okay. Yeah. Well. I, personally, because I've been there, I, I wouldn't leave it alone. Because you're just going to get it, well. You might get silence, but you might get inundated with "I don't like this," and here's why. And you're like, oh my God. by all the people who didn't fill out the survey. <laughs> well, 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 these minutes will not be adopted until after the next meeting anyway. So there you go. Yeah. So it, it will. It's your probably problem. not. It's probably a moot point. So you're, you solved your problem. Um, anyone have any other thoughts before we finish? I believe that. Yeah. Jeff, you look like you got one. <laughs> he wants a motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay. Board. Before we go, any board member comments? We'll have to take this thing down. We have to get just leave. No. Nay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hearing none, uh, can we get a motion to adjourn at 5.56 p.m.? So moved. Christina, all those in favor? Aye. Adjourn. Thank you very much. Your lack of sleep has paid off. I'm going to throw this away. I want it noted in the minutes. And I'm throwing this paper away too. Some of those are